Yes, I, I passed by there when we would go to the airport. Oh, okay, where do you live? I live in, in San Miguel. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Eso explica mucho, Ivan. Eso explica mucho. Yesterday when I said, ah, vieron el partido y, y Albos aquí, Albos aquí, callado, Ivan. Ivan no decía nada. Dame. I don't, I don't see soccer that much. You, you don't, all right, all right. You don't, you don't watch. I see. You don't watch soccer, Ivan. I see. I don't watch. There we go. Okay. Buenas noches, buenas noches. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Happy Tuesday. What do you guys think about the weather? In my it, case. It, it was delicious. Okay, okay. Uh, I cannot say the same. You cannot. <laughs> all right, Ivan. All right. I live <laughs> in a popa, which is really usually hot. And for the past two days, it has been cool. And now that the, you know, that that the night has come, today, today is cold. Mm -hmm. So, a popa is not hot. A popa at this moment nice. is cold. It's delicious. <laughs> delicious. Delicious. Hello, hello. Bienvenidos. How you doing? How are you, Glenda? Ivan, good to see you, Paco. Always a pleasure. Nesty, hello. Cindy, Diana, Guille. Tocayo, Roberto. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Karen, welcome back, Karen. Good to see you. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Teacher. Hello, hello. Good morning, teacher. Good morning, teacher. Good morning, teacher. How are you? How are you? How are you? All right. Um, how, how is everybody doing? Is everybody good? Good. Okay. Any news? that you guys would like to share anything important happen? The weather. The weather? It delicious. The, it, it is, it's really nice. Uh, yeah. You know, I was gonna come out with a, with a scarf, but then I said, no, they're gonna make fun of me. They're gonna, uh, y, y, y este francés, que está en la, <laughs> como está en, la, en los Alpes franceses. Elegancia, la de Francia. Elegancia, la de Francia. I said, no, you know what? Uh, uh, I love the car too. That's, yeah, you know, um, when it gets really cold, like in years past, I don't know if you guys remember, but like around October, November, and December, it would start to get nice and cold so that when Christmas came around it was really nice and cold Ooh, long time ago long time ago long time ago now it's all over the place so <laughs> all right good to see everybody here welcome good evening and Can I Paco, say no worries don't worry Paco you know I understand about the internet yes Glenda yes what what were you gonna say okay can I say good night? No. No. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Usually you say good night when you are leaving. So if you walk into a place, you say good evening. And then when you leave, you want to say good night. Now, cuando te despedís, I don't know if you guys, do you remember like watching a TV show? And they at night, right? At night, they would always say good night, everybody. But it, that's usually when, yes. yeah, when they're closing uh -huh. and everybody's leaving. So good evening. Uh -huh. e even yes. though it's really late, like 10 p.m. Even though that is okay. correct. So you okay. can walk in at any time at night and you say good evening. Now, good what evening. you cannot do. Okay is you cannot walk in in the afternoon and say good evening. 
because okay. people will say, what do you mean? You know, <laughs> what are you talking about? So Since what time? Uh, I would say maybe, well, you know, right now the sun is setting at around 630. So we could say yeah. whenever the sun sets and it's, it starts to get dark, you can you can start saying good evening. Okay. Okay. If the sun is still out, good afternoon. Good okay. afternoon. Okay. Good afternoon. Yes. Good afternoon. Now, um, I think I think I mentioned it before. There's a there's a like a period of time where it's not too late in the afternoon. And so what do you say, right? Well, what you can say is you could say good day. Good day, everybody. Good day. Good day. Good day to everybody. If it's too early, right? I would say anywhere between 12 and 2. Because, you know, you can't say afternoon. You haven't gotten there yet. Y ya no puede decir good morning because it's already too late. So it's like good day, everybody. Right? Good day to you. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. All right, and let me see, let me give my welcome here. Welcome to day two, week two. Everyone, yeah, time is flying. Time is flying so fast. Um, they still haven't gotten back to me on the day that the module ends. And so I'm trying to also bring that in. Usually, you know, it used to be four weeks. I don't think that has changed. And let me go ahead and share with you guys. Hola, Melissa. Welcome. Welcome aboard. Let me go ahead and share everything with you guys. And let's see. Calendar. Where is my calendar? Here's my calendar. And so this is going to be week number two. Week number three is from the 8th to the 11th. And then week number three should be from the 15th through the 18th. So, you know, I think that it, I think that might make sense because we end class on the 23rd as it appears on our platform. And that would be one, two, three, four days. You know, that's what I it's actually three days before. So I'm going to have to, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to have to reply, resend the question. Maybe they missed it because I have never seen it close the module this, this late. Usually they give uh, like an extra four or five days. I'll check on, I'll check on that. In the meantime, I, I think we're here. We're, well, we're here. And we should end our class based on a four week module. We should end it on the 18th. So I'll keep you guys updated on that. So February 18th should be our last day. Let me go ahead and put that down in the chat. chat and February 18th last day of modules okay all right and can you repeat the, the date please sure February the 18th okay thank you now that is Tentative, Glenda. Okay. Okay, so please, it, it might change, okay? I'll, I'll try to get back to you guys today. If not, in class tomorrow, I should have an answer. 
Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Okay. We're all set here. Let me go ahead. So February 18th, hopefully, you know, they do give us up to the fe to February 18th. Speaking of February and looking at our dates, Valentine's Day lands on Sunday the 14th. Well, it's always the 14th, right? So the only thing that would change here is that it's Sunday. Are you guys ready for your Valentine's? Do you guys observe Valentine's? Do you give gifts? Do you receive gifts? Flowers, candy, anything at all? Yes, I received gift. gift. Oh, that's good. That's good. Glenda, what did you receive last year? Mm. Some chocolate. Nice. Nice. Got to do the chocolates. Got to have them. Yes. All right. <laughs> did, does anybody, did anybody else receive anything last year? I received chocolates as well. Delicious, Glenda. Yes. Fantastic chocolates. <laughs> All right, yes. I got chocolates. Uh, anybody else? Flowers, ladies. Any other ladies receive flowers? Did any other ladies give flowers? Fíjate que necesitamos implementar eso. ¿Por qué no nos regalan nada, ¿Mm? señoritas? ¿Mm? We like chocolate too, you know. No, que solo corbata y calzoncillo nos quieren dar. Va a creer, Paco. No, ya no. No calcetines. more. Calcetines, corbata, calzoncillo. No, 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 no. Ya no se puede. Por algo, ¿eh? <laughs> <laughs> They see something that we don't. Yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you guys for joining. And so... Remember that the module, the class is about conversation and it's about practicing a little bit. So I'm gonna call on some of you guys uh, to see if you guys uh, wanna share some information. You don't have to turn on your camera. You can leave it just with the audio because I know that sometimes when you turn on the camera, you know, the audio and the camera it completely throws off the internet. So um, you don't have to turn on your camera for this unless you want to, okay? So yesterday we finished off in the platform with 2.6 and it was, what have you been doing? What have you been doing? And so with the whole idea of what have you been doing was, for you to share some information about what you heard. So it was more than just a conversation. It was more about practicing to listen and what do you understand from that conversation? What were the key moments? Because remember, there's some people that talk a lot but the key points and the key moments, those are the important, those are the important pieces of every conversation. After 2.6, we started to go into 2.7, which was the practice of the present perfect continuous. And we had the video. How many of you guys had a chance to go into the video? and complete the video. I think Paco was already ahead. Paco was already in number three, section three. Um, Ivan, I believe also, you were also had, had been moving along. Did anybody else have a chance to go into the video for present perfect continuous? No? Okay. So as you guys recall, we were talking about the different parts of tenses. Right, and how in total there's 12 different tenses that you can use, and uh, I, I believe that we saw a couple that are the most common, which is uh, when you talk about the simple present, and that's something that we use, you know, very, very, um, 
uh, I, I want to say very commonly used. We use it a lot. But the more you try to go into the tenses, it is a little bit different because you have to actually think about a specific date, a specific time, and a specific action, and what it is that you're trying to say, and how do you want to sound. Now, a lot of people forget about the tenses just simply because um, in our media, uh, news, uh, they, try to, they try to do it as best as, uh, as they can in the news. I, I think the closest one to actually following the rules is the news. Um, social media, you know, Facebook videos, uh, Twitter videos, TikToks, um, anything that's probably outside of the news when they're using tenses, sometimes they have the tendency to kind of, you know, not say it right because that's the cool thing. So don't fall for, you know, following something that you saw on a movie or a series. Uh, sometimes they do it on purpose as well. So uh, be very careful with, with how you use your tenses because in real life situations, you, you want to make sure you're doing it correctly. All right. So we're going to start out with the video. And this one here is going to show us the structure of present perfect continuous. And I had a presentation for this one. Let me see if I let me see if I can bring it up so you guys can see it. No, I told you I save a lot of the presentations because they have uh, information on them that I like to use from time to time. Uh, and let me see if I can see it here. I know it's really small for you guys. So just hang tight. Let me see if I can find it. It's in one of these. Uh, we It's usually very repetitive. Um, in the basic modules, you kind of go over it real quick. There's not too much explanation going on. But as the modules move forward, the information gets more robust. Then you start to see it a lot. And then you start to see it with explanations. And so um, that's what I try to help with. So here's, the, here's one that we used originally. Uh, let me go ahead and erase some of this stuff so I can make it a little bit larger for you guys. And I know it looks tiny now. Let me see if we can get it bigger, 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 bigger. Let me see. How's it looking? Is everybody okay with this size? Or do you guys need me to make it a little bit larger? It's okay. It's okay right there? Ivan, how, how's it look? It's looking good? We're good? Yep. It's All right. Great level. Okay, good, good. So you guys remember, so so these are very repetitive and you guys are gonna constantly hear them and, and talk about them. And English in general is that way, right? Everything is very repetitive. Um, you come back to verbs, you come back to, you, you know, to, to, um, to discussing the different rules. And you guys will always ki kind of keep hearing the same information come back around and around. And that's because you have to have an idea and an understanding of what it is and what is the rule that's being implemented in order for you guys to sound, um, I'm not going to say perfect, but I want you guys to sound good, right? And so as you guys remember, we were talking about 12, 12 tenses, right? Simple, continuous, perfect and perfect continuous. And then within the simple, you can find the past, present, and future. So simple has three, continuous has three, perfect has three, perfect continuous also has three. And that's the way that you guys are gonna kind of put it together once you guys see the sentences and the sentence structures. And so what is it that you want to say? If you want to talk about the past and you want to use the simple past, what is it that you're trying to say? Well, I want to say I studied 
English yesterday. As simple as I can get it, but I also want to let them know that I did it in the past. And this is the one that we use the most common. Simple past. I studied English yesterday. Or it could be yesterday I was studying English, right? Or yesterday um, I did this, okay? Whatever it is that you, that you want to say, that this is the simplest form that you could use. And then that's why the name, right? It's simple. Continuous means that it's moving, right? What were you doing from seven to nine? Well, from seven, from 7.15, 7.30, 7.45, 8, 8.15, 8.30, all the way up to nine, I was studying. So there was a movement that was going on. And you want to let that person that you were talking to know that from seven to nine, you were studying. Now, they're not going to follow up. They are not going to follow up with a question of, were you studying the whole two hours? Because you are already implying that you studied from seven to nine. From seven to nine, I was studying English and it was a moving. And that's why we call it continuous, okay? All mm -hmm. right, so now it, it gets a little bit easier, but also at the same time, and it gets a little bit more complex because we start talking about perfect. Now you wanna talk about something that you did specifically. I had studied English, right? Now, Within perfect, we also have perfect continuous because you can say a specific moment and you can also say a specific moment that was moving within that time frame. So you can say, I had been studying English from seven to nine. And you guys see how it's, it's being used and it's very accurate as well. So, 12, 12 tenses, simple, continuous, perfect, perfect, continuous. And all of these can be used with past, present, and future. Okay. All right. We're going to put this one on the side and we're going to go back because here we have present, perfect, continuous. Now, when you guys see it, Perfect, well, let me see. Present, perfect, continuous comes out. Present, perfect, continuous. So in other words, I have been studying English is the phrase to use. And that's what we're going to look into. Okay. Let me go ahead and share my screen once more because I want to make sure I put the audio and then we're going to practice a little bit. So here we go, guys. Three, two, one. Hi, we want you to go back to the previous conversation. Can you find examples of the statements with have and haven't been? Now, we want you to stay for the explanation of the structure and use of the present perfect continuous. Present perfect continuous. Use the present perfect continuous for actions that start in the past and continue into the present. What have you been doing lately? I've been working two jobs for the last six months. How long have you been modeling? I've been modeling since I graduated. Have you been saving money? No, I haven't been saving any money. I've been spending it. Moving on. Present perfect continuous is a tense used for. A continuous or repeated activity that began in the past and continues into the present. It emphasizes the activity itself and its duration. Let's look at these examples. Jack has been waiting for over an hour. I've been studying since three o'clock. How long have you been studying French? 
And last but not least, we'll go over the structure of these tense. For affirmative, this is what we use. I, we, you, they, plus have been, plus verb, plus ing. He, she, it, plus has been, plus verb, plus ing. When in negative, we need to add the word not between have or has and been. And as always, in questions, the helping verb or the auxiliary goes at the beginning, followed by the subject, like this. Have plus subject plus been plus verb plus ing plus complement. Have you been saving money? Can you now work on the following exercises? How long have you been learning English? Why are you tired? What have you been doing? What have you been eating? All right, all right. Let's go back here a little bit. Perfect continuous. And here we are. Okay. And so these are the phrases. What have you been doing lately? In these particular phrases, what we are doing is we're using the present perfect continuous for actions that started in the past and continue into the present, which is, I would say, one of the ways that you guys can use them. Now, If you notice, there is no reducing going on here. You have to mention the whole word and the letters. So I want us to practice this before we start going into the second version. I ask you the first part of the phrase and the question, and then you answer with exactly what you see here, okay? And then we do vice versa, right? You ask me a question and then I will answer, okay? All right, so for this exercise, we're gonna do volunteers. Anybody wanna volunteer, just read. We're just gonna read the answer. Nesty, yo vi que Nesty, Paco, usted puede ir segundo, all right. Yes. A ver, Nesty, vamos. Voy a leer la primer, por, la primer parte y usted me contesta. Okay. Okay. What have you been doing lately? I've been working to job for the last six months. Oh, my God. Okay. Good, Nesty, good. Okay. I like how you brought this. This one here is pretty hard sometimes. I've, but you said I've. it good. I've been okay. working. Yeah, you got it. I've been working two jobs for the last six months. Good. Thank you very much, Nessie. Paco. Okay. Paco, how long have I you been modeling? I've been modeling since I graduated. Oh, nice. I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> All right. A ver, who else wants to volunteer? One more volunteer. Me, teacher. Cindy, all right. Remember, all I'm, all I'm doing is I'm reading and then you answer, right? Okay. Have you been saving money? No, I haven't been saving any money. I've been spending you've been spending it okay all right all right so have you been saving money no i haven't been saving any money i've been spending it all right this is what's going on all right so from there we move into our verbings and the structure you can say i I have been, you can say we, plural, you could say you, 
and you could say they, okay? We have been working together since last year. How long have you guys been working together? Oh my goodness, we have been working together since last year. We have been working together since last year. You could say he, she, or it. He has been painting his house for two hours. You could say he has been eating his food or his lunch for the past three hours. You can start to build your own sentence, but you have to always follow these rules. You have to start it with I, we, you, they, or you have to start it with he, she, it, depending on what you want to talk about, okay? Remember that it, right? It is very seldom used for people, so be careful. Some people might get offended, right? Okay, then we come to the actual exercise, here it is. Okay, and so for this one, I am going to ask you a question from here, and you guys will think of an answer and read it back to me. If you'd like, what we can do is you can write it down in the chat section first, that way you have an idea of what you want to reply. If you'd like, if not, don't worry about it. You can just do it, you know, as we're moving on the fly, as they say, and that would be okay. So let me go ahead and put the chat here. How long have you been learning English is the first question. How long? Have you been learning English? Okay. Are you guys tired? Well, if you are, I want to know why are you tired? Sorry about that. Why are, why are you tired? They say, why are you tired? And then you follow up quick with, what have you been doing? There we go, Ivan, that'll work. Yeah. What have you been eating? Bien los conocen, miren, como, como la vez pasada dijeron que todos comían a las ocho, todos. A las ocho y media. Ocho en punto. A las ocho en punto. Okay. Um, Ivan already started. Ivan, let's keep going. Let me go ahead and ask you the follow-up questions, okay? Um, only a question. Yes. I, I don't understand that question. Why are you tired? Well, it, it, because it's, and, and I'm glad you brought that up, Glenda. It's because this one here shouldn't be here. Ah, okay, okay. It should, it should okay. say, why are you tired? Oh, ah, okay, okay. So I'm sorry about that. Thank you. About that. thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, okay. Well, it, that answers both. At the, at the same time, Ivan, because it's, why are you tired? And then you answer that already. Oh, there we go, Paco. I've been hiking for one hour. All right. That's a nice little hike, Paco. Ahora, uh, oh. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. Now, hiking can be used pretty much for anything, but 
hiking usually has to do with uh, a little mountain, like a little path, or out in the wilderness. You know, when you go hiking in the in the forest. Now, if you went hiking to a forest or the mountain or volcano, then it's it's a okay. But if you just went outside your house and you live in the city, then you can say, I've been walking or I took a walk, e either way, right? And that usually means that you live in a city and you went out to walk. But so you can use either or. Just remember that usually when somebody hears hiking, they're going to ask you, where did you go hike, right? And then they, they might fo follow it up with that. So you can say walking, or I took a walk, or you can say hiking, or I took a hike. You can say that, right? Okay. I've been eating frijoles this week because my mom cooked a huge pan of them. <laughs> well, yeah, all right, all right. That answers our question, what have you been eating? <laughs> that is correct. There we go. Beans. Yeah, yeah. We love beans, with, man. With cream? With cream and cheese and avocado. Yo le pongo unas masitas. Um, my grandma, well, sopepito también. Well, not, not sopepito. I mean, <laughs> pitos, right? In general. In general. Costilla de cuche. Oh, oh, sí, oh, sí. Oh, my goodness. That's, that's fantastic. That's... <laughs> Oh, God, I'm hungry now. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So okay. let me see. Who else who wants to try it out? Um, Nessie, would you like to answer some of the one of these questions? Um, me puede equivocar, ¿verdad? <laughs> yes, of course. Yes. Okay. No problem. Okay. Let me ask How you this. Long... Let me ask you one here. Let me ask you number two, Nessie. Why okay. are you tired? Because I am a, I, I have, I, I've uh, working this afternoon, so, um, so hard, also much work. I don't know how okay. to say this. No, you did it. You did it. So, so. Let me let me go ahead and write. This is what I, this is what I have been working hard all afternoon. Yes. There you go. So yeah, okay. you got it. You got it. So remember what what happens with us is that usually we think in Spanish and then we translate it and then we say it in English. So so there's a there's a little chain, right? And what we are going to do is we're going to break that chain, Nessie. We're going to break it. Because okay. when I that tried to yeah, you did and right and but it it came out good. I I I heard. Now, I also heard you saying I've which is good because that is I've been working hard all afternoon. You could say it like that. Both okay. ways are correct, Nasty. You can say I have, or you can say I've. Whichever one you feel more comfortable with, you are, it's okay for you to say it. I have been working hard all afternoon, or I've been working hard all afternoon. That, that'll work. Thank you very much. Okay. I mean, Melissa, did you, did you want to participate? Melissa. Sure. All right, here we go, Melissa. I, I think you already answered. Did you answer? Yes, you did. Yes. Okay. What have you been eating, Melissa? Um, I I've been eating beans and you, eggs. <laughs> you could say that. You could say that. Now you could also say the way you wrote it down. I've been eating my dinner, and that's uh -huh. enough. Okay. We usually, in Spanish, we have the tendency of actually saying what we're eating. So if somebody asks, hey, you know, what are you doing? You say, wow, ahorita estoy pan con no sé qué. But 
but in, in in the United States, usually just say I'm having breakfast and that's it. I'm having lunch, I'm having breakfast, I'm having dinner, and that's okay. That's enough. Okay. Okay. So the way you wrote it down, you got it. You got it. All right. So we're moving. We are moving forward. And we have our knowledge check. Let me go ahead and make it a little bit smaller because I feel like it's all over here, all in my face, all in my face. All right. And this is section 2.9. Complete the conversations with the present perfect continuous. For most of the exercises, you need to select two choices, except for the first letter B. Okay. So let's look at letter A and see what we have so far. It says, what blank space you blank lately and then there is a do in parentheses okay and then we have the choices which are have had been do or been doing what do you guys think fits have and oh. doing have and been doing. So then it would sound like this. What have you been doing lately? Does that sound good? Yes. Okay. Okay. What have you been doing lately? Now, whenever you guys have sentences that look like this, if the sentence is a little bit longer or it forms part of a bigger phrase, then you can use reducing. You can reduce. However, on these that are really short, you might not want to reduce everything. And that's why the way we're reading them is the complete word because it's a short little phrase. So you don't need to reduce that, right? What have you been doing lately? You want to sound it out. Been doing lately. Okay. Let's go to the next one. B. Well, I blank. And then we have spend my free time at the beach. We have 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 been spending, spent, or had spending. Had spending. I had it. I. So on this one, we only use one. Well, I have been spending my free time at the beach. How does that sound? Good? Okay. Let's go to the next one. Blank you blank part time this year. Have you been working part time this year? Have you been working part time this year? No, I haven't. I've been working full time. Okay. Have you been working part time this year? Okay. So we took the word work and we added been and added working, been working. Okay. All right. Next one. Yes, I blank. I blank make drinks at coffee time for the past few months. 
Yes, I have. Yes, I have been making drinks at the coffee time for the past few months. I have been making drinks at coffee time. Así se, así se llama a mí. Así se llama mi cafetería. Ya la rían estos para robar todo. <laughs> coffee time. Have, have been making. Yes. Yes, I have. I have been making drinks at coffee time for, for the past few months. Been making? Naila. Okay. We're moving. How blank you blank feel recently? How have you been feeling? Been feeling recently. How have you been feeling recently? Okay. Ya casi, ya casi. Great. Great. I blank a lot of sleep and I blank not eat as much since I started my diet. I have been getting a lot of sleep and I, I haven't... I have been since I started my diet. And I haven't, did we say haven't been eating? Haven't been eating. So it sounds like this. Great. I've been getting a lot of sleep and I haven't been eating as much since I started my diet. It sounds okay. Sounds good. All right, let's go. Blank you, blank, get enough exercise lately? Have you been getting enough exercise lately? Okay. Oh, they try to trap us. Look, they put been getting, but it's misspelled. Yeah. Have you been getting... Okay, have you been getting enough exercise lately? No, I blank have, I blank study a lot for the big exam. No, I haven't. I have been studying a lot of, a lot, a lot for my, a big exam. Okay. No, I haven't. I've been studying a lot for a big exam. And the spelling, remember, study, studying, you just add the ing to the y. You don't have to remove it. Okay, whenever it ends with a y, you can always add the ing. Okay, so here we go. Let's try it out. Knowledge check 2.9. Here we go. Here we go. And yeah. Well done. Well done, class. Here you go. Well done. Well done. And there we go. Una manita, va. Una manita. Let me see. How can I put the manitas? I don't even know how to put manitas on here anymore. I used to know. I think so. Oh, okay. No manitas. All right. We're moving next. That was 2.9, section 2.9. If you guys need any help, remember. Okay. We're going to start off with the reading exercise, 2.10. And as you guys remember... We have to answer the questions based on what we read. Let me see here. It's a pretty nice size article. Let me see if I can make it a little bit larger for you guys. 
Oh yeah, we need to make it larger. And let me see how many we have. Look at the pictures and skim the article. Which child do you think is an artist, a musician, a college graduate? Okay, let me see here. Let me try to move it. I think that's, yeah, I just let it. I think that's it, guys. It doesn't let me do it anymore. I start at the bottom. Wait. Okay. Oh, gosh. Okay. Can you guys, are you guys able to read? Can you guys see the writing? All right. Teacher, I can help you with that. If you want to help me, you are more than welcome to do it. Child, child prodigious. Other musicians have described Sarah Chang as the most beautiful, wonderful woman violinist. They have they ever heard what makes this phrase especially surprising is Sarah's age. She's only in her 20s, and people have been describing her this way since she was a child. Her father gave her a violin. By age five, she was accepted at the famous Julianist School of Music in New York City. By age, she was performing as a violin solist with major orchestra. And since then, Sarah has performed around the world and recovered, recorded many albums. You got it. Sarah Chang. <laughs> Chang. Chang. Just how you said violin, the only thing you need to add is the IST. So you would say violinist. Ah, okay, violinist. There we go. You got it. So the same way you say violin, that's the same way you're going to pronounce violinist. Ah, okay, violinist. Right. You got it. Let me see. We have the next one. Let me go ahead and help you guys out with that one. Before Michael Kearney was born, the doctors warned his parents that he might have learning difficulties. He's been proving them wrong ever since. By the time he was four months old, Michael would say full sentences like, what's for dinner, mom? By 10 months, he could read words studying at home with his parents. Michael completed four grade levels each year. At 10, he graduated from college with honors. And at 14, he received a master's degree. Now, in his late teens, he is teaching and working on his PhD. And there it is. Okay. Okay. You guys get to read the final on your own. Starting from when all the way to published, you guys have a minute, one minute. If you want, teacher, I can help you with that, too. You know what? No, no, that's okay. Let's, let's, let's have everybody kind of do it independently. Give me one moment. Everything just went crazy over here. What happened? What happened? Oh, gosh. Sorry, guys. It went. The camera went a little crazy. 
Let me go ahead and take that off. That's all right. My green wall is all right. It's all right. Okay. One minute, guys. One minute. All right. How are you doing? How are you guys? You guys all right? Okay. Doing the first one. The question is, how do other musicians describe Sarah? The most wonderful, perfect violin violinist. The most wonderful, perfect violinist. Okay. As you guys can see, we have a few more down the list to finish. And I'm going to ask you guys to go ahead and finish that on your own. And then we're going to review them tomorrow. I am going to give you back some time because I know that you guys are tired. Así soy yo, así soy yo, o sea, ¿verdad? Benevolente este teacher, benevolente. And I'm going to give you guys the time back. Give you guys the time Thank back. you guys for coming in. Thank you guys for coming in. Have a wonderful night and see you guys tomorrow. See you tomorrow, teacher. Okay. Have a good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. 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 Good night.